Tonight Show. Folks, my next guest is a retired four-star admiral and former commander of all U.S. Special Operation Forces worldwide. His new book is called Sea Stories. Please welcome Admiral Bill McRaven. What happened to the whiskey? Uh, I still have it if you'd well, like a taste. Yeah, you know, I'm a sailor. You left me water? All right. All right. <laughs> uh, thank you, sir. There you go. Perfect. Pour Cheers. a little over the deck. Now, you retired in 2014 as a four star admiral in the U.S. Navy, commander of all special operation forces worldwide. You oversaw the capture of Saddam Hussein, the rescue of Captain Phillips, and the killing of Osama bin Laden. Now, <laughs> those things would look great on a college uh, <laughs> application, by the way, if you're looking to go. To now, having spent 37 years in, in the military um, and, and seen the United States uh, go to war in, in, in the Middle East several times right. in there, right now, uh, if uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, there's a carrier group in, in the Persian Gulf. Um, I'm sure there's uh, a lot of support being sent to them to the Middle East. There's a talk of 120,000 troops going over. Um, in resistance to what the government or what our government is saying is uh, threats from Iran. Right. Um, it, it's really hard to figure out exactly, specifically, what they're talking about. Um, do you think that the government has more of a responsibility to explain to Americans in a way that we can understand why they're exerting this military force? Yeah, yeah certainly. If we do a, a surge like that, and if, if in fact the, the war drums start beating, I think the president and the national security uh, advisor have a responsibility to let uh, the American public know why we're doing this, and Congress as well. The, but, the reason I ask is because, yeah. you know, part of our job is we obsess about the news all day long, right. we sort of dip ourselves in the radioactive pool that is the modern news cycle all day yeah. long. And I can't tell you why. Right. So here's what, here's what I would offer is, uh, well, I don't know John Bolton. I've had a chance to meet uh, Pat Shanahan, the, the new, or the, uh, the interim secretary of defense. Mm -hmm. And I know very well Joe Dunford, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Joe Dunford. Probably one of the finest officers I have ever worked with, mm -hmm. and uh, and so the American public can have great confidence. Uh, and Shanahan, you 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 think? I think, I think he seems like a good guy. Uh, again, I don't and know. And John him. Bolton, what's the word? On again, him? I, I don't know John Bolton, so I'm reluctant to uh, to comment on. Do on you Bolton. know anyone who knows John? Well, Bolton? Well, I know a lot of people that know John Bolton. <laughs> and what have they said to you about John? Yeah, Bolton? that's classified, and you have to have a clearance in okay, order to. Yes, uh, yes. Yeah. In, in you order will to... admit it's a ridiculous mustache, right? <laughs> you know. I tried to grow a mustache when I was a long, young lieutenant junior grade. If I could have grown one like that, that would have been great. But okay, uh, yeah. Yeah. all right. So he's achieved that much. That's he has achieved you know. that okay. much. Okay. Well, you you have a, a new book here called Sea Stories: My Life in Special Operations. Um, what what sort of stories are we going to get in here? Yeah. So uh, it's a memoir of sorts. Uh, there are about 18 short stories, and uh, they cover the Bin Laden raid. Uh, they cover the rescue of Captain Phillips and the capture of Saddam Hussein. Uh, but what I hope people take away is also the great men and women that I had an opportunity to work with in my 37 years. Just some remarkable heroes that, that frankly, a lot of people don't get a chance to hear about. And I, I named some names in there for, from some folks that worked with me on these missions that really deserve the credit. I mean, I was fortunate enough to be the commander, but the guys that really did the, the lion's share of the work uh, you know, were the, were the young enlisted men and the, and the great officers that worked for me. You sat down across from Saddam Hussein, I understand. I did. What's it like to, to, to sit down and, and talk with, with a, yeah. a dictator? I've only had to do that once. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I think what was interesting was uh, I held Saddam for about 30 days. And when we first captured him, uh, done by some great Army Special Operations folks. We captured him. We brought him back to uh, our holding area. And the first couple days, he was arrogant. He was pompous. But as the days went on, and, and we uh, kind of kept him in, not in hard isolation, but I kept him away from a lot of other people, when he didn't have his generals, and he didn't have his handmaidens, and he didn't have his palaces, he quickly became just kind of a pathetic old man. And I say, contrast that with the great character of somebody like Nelson Mandela who spent decades incarcerated and because he was a man of great character came out as strong as when he went in. 
Saddam Hussein was a man who had no character and, and quickly proved that in a couple of days of being incarcerated. Where do you find the courage to say that Nelson Mandela is a better person than Saddam Hussein, <laughs> sir? Where do you find the courage? Maybe the easiest thing I've ever said. Um, uh, uh, you ever get seasick? It'd be tough for an admiral <laughs> to get seasick. Yeah, I don't get seasick. No? Thank, you, thank God. Never? What's the roughest seas you were ever in? Well, I was in a 33-foot boat that found a 40-foot wave one time, and it, it, did, it didn't go so well for me in the boat. Wow. Uh, so that may be the roughest uh, seas I have been in 15-foot seas, the biggest seas I've ever been in, and I wished I was dead. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, well, this was, was one dramatic moment that, uh, again, the wave won, and I ended up underwater. Uh, you capsized? I did. Uh, the boat got up ended. I was uh, trapped underneath uh, the boat, uh, tangled up in uh, what we call shot line uh, for a couple of minutes. And uh, as I say, as I tell in the book, kind of miraculously found myself untangled and uh, came to the surface and was rescued by, by a couple of seals. And you don't know how you got out of that line? I do not know how I got out of that line. Any I mean, chance I... it was a mermaid? <laughs> no, no <laughs> chance at all. Have you met Daryl Hannah? <laughs> Well, the book is Sea Stories. It's in stores now. Admiral Bill McRaven, everybody. We'll be right back with a performance by the Broadway cast of The Prom.